Canadian real estate prices are projected to fall 10% as per Mortgage Professionals Canada and Oxford Economics. And they got some decent rationale. Meanwhile, the BOC plans to hold the overnight lending rate at 5% into the middle of 2024. I'm Matt Agent Kelly. This channel is all things Canadian real estate, my local market of Abbotsford in the Fraser Valley. And if you hate realtors, feel free to drop me a derogatory comment directed at me personally down in the comments. And if you're just here for the content, please do subscribe to the channel. All right, Canadian house prices to fall 10% in 2024 as economy slips into recession. The Canadian economy is on the cusp of a mild recession with downturn conditions expected to bleed into 2024. Accordingly, prices are on track to slip into an additional 10% by early, early 2024 next year. Forecasting released Wednesday by Mortgage Professionals Canada and Oxford Economics say that although sharp downturn, sharp downward price pressure will characterize major Canadian housing markets over the next few years, the market value of Canada's housing stock should return to its current level by 2027, quarter four. So probably three months back, I remember seeing articles that Canadian real estate was supposed to end 2023 up eight and a half percent year over year. And that's not looking too good right now. So they're forecasting that housing prices are going to come down 10% by early 2024. So I'm just going to assume that early is probably quarter two or earlier. So by summer 2024, prices should be down 10% according to this. And then they say that they will not recover to today's current prices until almost 2028, quarter four, 2023. I would say this is pretty realistic. Like I don't think this is overly bearish or underly bearish. I'd say this is a decent, a decent forecast. Although talks of a recession, even a mild one, are certainly loaded with doom and gloom, it would be a clear sign that the economy has slowed and could mean the end of rate hikes for the foreseeable future. MPC and Oxford forecast that the bank will opt to hold its benchmark rate at 5% until mid-2024, which will keep average mortgage rates at 6.1% for the remainder of 2023 before gradually easing rates to a neutral level by early 2027. So they're saying interest rates will be minimum where they're at right now or or higher until mid 2024 and they will slowly ease off interest rates until quarter oh early 2027 and if you guys didn't know the bank of canada assumes to be a neutral overnight lending rate as 2.5 percent so they would ease off two and a half percent basically over the next three years what is that yeah basically the next three years so pretty interesting a lot of people are saying that the economy can't run unless the overnight lending rate is at five percent and these guys think that they're going to cut it back down to two and a half percent over the next three years. So here's the other thing they say in this article. Housing completions starts on track to lag. With the cost of borrowing at a remarkable high level, housing completions will remain under pressure in the year to come, says Ren, uh, Wednesday's report. Looking ahead, we expect housing, housing completions to fall significantly by 21% next year. The recovery will then be 5.7% gradual with modest growth in 2025 and a much bigger jump in 2026. So 21% less homes actually finished being built next year. And then in 2024, 2025, 5.7% more than 2024. The story is expected to be similarly downcast for housing starts, which are on track to witness one of the slowest growth rates in a decade across all Canadian regions for the remainder of 2023. So not a lot of new housing projects being launched in the last little bit of 2023 here, one of the slowest decades of all time. Quebec is projected to experience the most significant decline in housing starts, followed by the Atlantic provinces and the prairies, says the report. So that's interesting. Over the rest of the decade, we forecast housing starts to exceed historical levels in the Atlantic provinces, prairies, and Ontario, while the other Canadian regions will continue to experience a downturn in growth. So they think we're gonna have a slower growth rate in BC in comparison to all these other provinces. Alberta is an interesting interesting one. So they say in the in the prairies, there's going to be a slower uh, housing start growth, which is interesting because they just got like millions of acres of vacant land that they could just build on there. So I mean, I, it, I understand BC because in BC, you need to get like four to six people to agree to sell and move all at the same time to actually build townhomes or condos in place of those four single family homes. But in Alberta, they just got vacant land to build on, so interesting. So to summarize this, they see prices going down 10% before quarter two, 
2024. And again, I think this is completely possible. I don't think it's overly bearish or underly bearish. And they don't see prices recovering to where they're at right now until 2028. Now this one makes sense within their projection of rates slowly coming down until early 2027. However, if they see rates come down faster than what's projected in here, I think prices are gonna go up a lot faster than what's in this forecast. Completions falling 21% next year. Housing starts have pretty much at least for the last 10 years, always been very far below where they need to be at. Immigration's at all time highs. And that means by 2025, we should see some type of supply shock. Unless immigration goes down or interest rates do remain as high as what they are right now, which would obviously mean the large portion of the buyer pool can't buy homes. However, if interest rates stay this, this high, construction is as slow as it is right now. Immigration is as high as it is right now. And did I already say interest rates stay this high? If interest rates stay this high, paired with all of these things, I think rental rates are going to continue to rip to the upside. And that could get to a point where the rental rates start actually justifying the purchase prices of these homes, regardless of what the interest rates are. If they're cash flow positive or cash flow neutral, then it makes sense for investors to buy them, which would likely bring us an uptick in demand, which could push up prices if supply is really low either way. So I'm really just spitballing here. Overall, I think this is a pretty conservative estimate of things. I know like 10% in historical terms would seem like an absolutely catastrophic, most bearish freaking estimate of all time. But I think given the current circumstances, 10% is like, I would say a pretty conservative estimate right now. And it's my opinion that I think prices are going to fall for at least the next five months. I think next spring is anybody's best guess, but at least the next five months, we'll probably see prices come down. Now, my opinion for 2025, um, I think prices are going to be going up. I think by, you know, early 2027, I think prices will be higher than what they are today. That's just my take on this. Who knows how much higher, but I don't think that we're going to break even over the next basically, you know, four or five years, whatever it is. I think prices will be higher by early 2027, but we're all just guessing. Nobody really knows. If you made it to the end of the video, don't forget to subscribe, like this video. And if you like this video, you're going to like this video. So make sure you watch this video. I'm that Agent Kelly. I'm making moves to move you. Peace.